So I walked in on a burglar in my house. My reaction was extremely uncharacteristic of myself. Have you ever acted in a way that surprised yourself? I was at home while someone tried to break into my house. I heard a noise coming from the back door, but that's nothing unusual. It wasn't until I kept hearing the noise that I decided to check it out. There was a guy, probably mid 30s, trying to pry open the back door with a screwdriver. When I look back I really acted weird in my opinion. I treated him as if he was some stray animal that had wandered up in my yard. I remember clapping my hands to get his attention and saying what the frick are you doing. We locked eyes and that's when he knew he was caught. He slowly backed away before grabbing a hammer and running off the back porch. The way I handled it was nothing like I could have predicted, but it worked, so I guess that's what I should be thankful for. This is the exact same reaction my wife had when someone tried breaking in in the wee hours of the morning. I am ashamed to say I slept through it. Not me but my mom, when my brother was just a baby, got her purse snatched in a parking lot, not knowing what to do. She just started running toward the thief. To her surprise she was actually catching up to him. She grabbed him by the hood and pulled it around his neck so he fell down backwards. She promptly yelled at him as if he was her 5 year old son. Don't you ever do that again and took her purse back. There was no money in the purse just Cheerios for the baby and tampons. She said she was on her period and my brother was hungry. She was in a local newspaper the next day but she was embarrassed because it listed her age next to the story. Not my story, but this was my mom. My mom is usually pretty calm, but gets flustered if she needs to make a quick decision. Sometimes. This time she obviously didn't. She was at our neighborhood's corner store, which happens to be at the top of a hill. As she came out of the store, she noticed a van with two, maybe three, can't remember exactly, children in it was starting to roll away, down the hill. My mom just dropped all her crap and started sprinting after this van. The van wasn't going super fast as it was rolling from a stop, but my mom caught up, jumped in, and slammed the brakes. Well moms develop superhuman attributes when children are at stake. I was walking in downtown Atlanta one night when a rather terrifying looking man tried to rip my purse off my shoulder. I gave him the angriest glare I could as I bellowed, get your motherfucking hands off my purse and he hightailed it out of there, realizing a split second afterwards how dangerous that could have been. I freaked out and started to cry. I get those bad butt overload cries sometimes. Very rare occurrence. In my old apartment, I heard the main door to the building open and then close a minute later at 3am. A few minutes later, I heard the building door open again. This time, I jumped out of my bed and went to my apartment door. With no peephole, I decided to lay flat on my stomach and look underneath the door to watch for footsteps. The next 20 seconds were something out of a scary movie. Instead of seeing footsteps, I see hands. A man was crawling up the old steps so not to make noise. Then I see his head making his way up the stairs, and he turns, looks under my door and we look directly into each other's eyes. I flipped out, smacked the door with my fist and yelled who the frick are you? Next, I did probably the dumbest thing I could have done, but the amount of adrenaline that pumped through me was instantaneous and in a fight or flight moment. I chose fight. I opened the door and chased the guy down the stairs and out of the building but he was a few steps ahead of me. Not the smartest thing for a young college age girl to do. Instead of going outside and chasing him down the street though, I ran back up to my apartment and called the cops and gave a description of the guy. Jesus Christ, you deserve a medal for not pee yourself as his eyes crested the steps, although he was probably less scary than the eyeless. Backwards jointed. Bottom jaw missing horror that I imagined in your story. I chased down a thief in New Orleans. I was bicycling home from a friend's house when I passed a park and saw a screaming woman with a young child. She was pointing and yelling. He stole my phone he stole my phone. That's when I saw two kids running out of the park. Another good Samaritan on a bike and I made eye contact. We didn't say a word to each other. We just took off after these punk butt kids. 
We chased them for about 3 blocks before one broke off down an alley and the other one with the phone turned around and shouted what the frick and threw the phone onto the roof of the nearest house. He then ran away down a side street. At this point the other guy on a bike and I introduced ourselves and shook hands on a job well done. We knocked on the door of the house. An old lady answered. We explained the situation and she got a ladder out of her garage. We got the phone and returned it to the woman and her child in the park. She offered us both money and we both said no. After a brief conversation we all went our separate ways. Like the person in the original post I am not a fighter. I am a scrawny artist in my 30s. Also, like the original story, I probably did a stupid or dangerous thing. But on this day justice prevailed. Side note, after the fact, the victim explained to us that these two kids had been slinking around the park for a while before they approached her and asked to use her cell phone. She reluctantly said yes but was trying to not think the worst of people. As soon as they had her phone they took off running. Do with that bit of information what you will. Sounds bit odd. But if a stranger needs to borrow something off you, take something of theirs. Like a shoe. A teacher used to do this in class when someone forgot a pen. That way they would remember to return the pen. Not sure if a shoe would slow them down though. 10 years ago I walked in on a potential burglar though I had nothing really of value and did what any American would do. Beat him badly with a baseball bat while hoping he wouldn't take it from me or sue me. Turns out the guy was also a wanted rapist. You'll feel a little poorly knowing you injured another human. When I pictured this, you had just gotten home from a really crappy day at work and was like boy, you just tried to rob the wrong house. I always thought I'd help someone out if they were being robbed on the street. So I was surprised when I eventually did see it happening and I just kinda stood there and was generally as helpful as a chocolate teapot. I lived by myself for most of this past summer in my abandoned college town and was having a sketchy week. Lots of weird cars. Increased drug activity. Dude riding his bike past my house repeatedly at 2am, etc. So one night I had finally calmed down and to my delight heard it start raining. This was about 3am. So I looked outside my bedroom window just as this completely normal looking guy opening the gate in my front yard like he lived there. He didn't look drunk. He looked purposeful. After cowering in my own bed for the past week I figured I would do that in the event of an actual threat but to my surprise I ran outside and yelled frick off as loud as I could. I am a 5 feet 2 girl and I was in my pajamas. But he turned around like he had been caught doing something and quickly walked away. I still wonder WTF he was trying to do, though. He was trying to get bitched out by a bad butt female. He totally succeeded. I got between a speeding lady and a stopped big rig on the freeway. I would have never thought though doing that but for some reason I just knew she would have died so I swerved in front of her so she would hit me and not the rig. I ended up totaling both our cars but she was alive. Always thought I would freeze up in a crisis. I'm one of those people who does way too much thinking in most situations. In any case, I was working as a camp counselor this past year when a kid a couple tables from me started choking. Everyone else was just looking and freaking out. But without knowing what was going on I was behind him performing the Heimlich and clearing his airway. No additional thought, just a steely focus on what had to be done. He started sobbing as soon as the food came out. And I had such an adrenaline high that I couldn't sit down to finish eating. TL. DR. Save a kid from choking at summer camp. I'll preface this by saying I fainted in the hospital at the sight of my friend's 12 grams shotgun wound to her leg. It was freaking gross. And the sick who is one disgusting butt place in itself. Eight ways to the story. Me and my friends were out riding bikes after enjoying some adult beverages. We were going down the bike path to a park to enjoy more of said beverages when my army ranger buddy eats crap out of nowhere. I knew right away it was a bad fall. By the time I got to him about 3 seconds later he was in seizures and bleeding profusely from every orifice in his head. I went into save mode and turned him to his side to let the blood leak out of his mouth because he was choking on it really bad. I told my other friend to dial 9, 1, 1, and just held him there while he seized and vomited blood all over me. The fire dep finally got there and I helped them get him on the board thing. By then the paramedics showed up and the firefighters told me to run up to them and tell them pram and scoop. Which means get this mother sucker help right away I assume. 
It was so weird because not once during that whole event did I get uneasy or shaken by the gore. I stayed with him and the Siku until his mom showed up from Kansas and visited him every day until he got out. On the bus on the way back from school, 16 year old me witnessed an accident. A girl was running across a 6 lane road to make the bus on a windy day in Calgary when her blowing hair obscured her vision and she ran out in front of an SUV. My mom was a paramedic and my dad a police officer and on a packed bus I was the only one to react immediately and rush to the victim. She lay on her back convulsing and had bitten off her bottom lip as I immobilized her neck. 50 city people stared from the bus windows not doing a thing as the bus driver came out after some time to lay his coat upon her for warmth and drove off before the police arrived. I found it incredibly sad and frustrating as she lay a couple feet from the clear lane and drivers passed going 50km and rubbernecking. Many with scowls at us bottlenecking the busy road. After the cops closed the street and I remained to be a witness I was questioned and rudely dismissed by the police. A long walk home as the buses had been rerouted remained and I still would do it all over again as I know few out there will. Oh and she did survive. Creepy guy lives next door. Really freaking creepy. In my house there resides an 11 year old girl, a 6 year old boy, and my girlfriend. A few days ago I hear something outside late at night and go to check it out. Creepy guy is standing at the window to the kid's room, then moves to my bedroom where the girlfriend is sleeping. I walk up behind him, grab him by his hair, and whisper in his ear. I catch you out here again I will kill you and eat your face. He pee his pants and ran back to his house. You might want to file a police report about that. For future reference, if all of you, god forbid, end up dead one day, they'll have a solid lead. In my younger, and dumber, days I worked at various bars and music venues as a promoter but also occasionally I would do security. One night a dance club turned particularly rowdy and the security team was forced to kick everyone out due to numerous fights. As we moved everyone out the door I was one of the first to exit the building. I looked to the far end of the parking lot and saw a man grab something from the trunk of his car, turn back towards the club entrance, and aim his pistol at the front door, right where I was standing. He then fired 4 shots at the club, in my direction, before getting in his car and driving away. I'm still amazed that instead of screaming, ducking, running, or being scared shitless I simply stood there and muttered, are you freaking killing me? TL. DR. I got shot at and and simply stood there instead of crapping my pants. Was driving in the middle of winter when the truck in front of us started sliding in the unplowed snow of the lane he was forced into by traffic trying to pass him. The full sized pickup flew off the side of the road, flipped end to end and came to rest upside down on the side of a hill held up only by a tree. I stopped my car and immediately ran down the hill in the snow terrified of what I might find. The first thing I see are Christmas presents strewn all over the place and a dog wandering aimlessly around. I crawl under the bed of the truck and start calling to see if anyone was in there. I was terrified of what I might find. In the shadow of the overturned truck I see a little old lady dragging herself out through the rear window of the truck. I grab her arms and pull her out quickly as there is liquid dripping down on me and I'm not sure if it's gas or not. When I get her out from under the truck I can see that her shin is clearly snapped as it is dangling in a way it should definitely not. I find a comfortable spot where I can get her sitting in the snow and stand behind her holding her up in a sitting position so she doesn't have to lay in the snow. I gave her my jacket to try to keep her warm. By this time other people had arrived and some had been sent to find cell service and call 9 one, one. We all then spent the next hour waiting for rescue services to arrive. When they did we let them take over. I gave the women my address, hopped in my car and drove away. 15 minutes down the road I had to pull over as I started shaking uncontrollably thinking about what we had all just been through. It was quite the start to my Christmas vacation. I was 19, broke, worried about money, hadn't eaten lunch that day as I had no money, was worried about dinner, and, to top it all off, the girl I dating and thought I'd be spending that night with told me she had enough and we were through. I go home and see a dude in my apartment digging through my crap. I lose it. I scream and tell him I'm going to rape him. I literally rip his clothes off, beat the crap out of him and he runs screaming from my apartment naked. Funny thing, 
I got his wallet and he has like $50 in there. So I ate dinner on him and mailed his wallet some money back to him. I am a quite, very girly girl, with an odd fear of breaking the rules, at least when I was in high school. I also cried a lot because I have lots of feelings. Anyway, I punched a girl bloody my junior year of HS. I was in the locker room after gym class and girls were making fun of a recently outed girl. I told them to shut up. They started calling me a lesbian and making even more fun of the girl. I promptly punched the lead girl in the face, knocking her head against lockers. Lots of blood but she was awake. Teacher walked in seeing me with my fist still balled and dragged me out in the hallway. She said I'm not bringing you to the dean. I am going to tell your mother. My mother worked at the school and all the teachers knew I hated to disappoint her. I sit outside my mom's office as the teacher tells her what happened. My mom is all red and angry and drags me by the arm into a closet down the hall. Did you really punch that girl in the face my mom screams? Yes, mom. I'm not sorry, she deserved it, I was expecting my car to get taken away. Instead, my mom busts out laughing I did not think you had it in you. I know your sister could beat the crap out of anyone but I always thought you would just take a punch. Gee, thanks mom. The next day my mom and I played hockey and I got to go to the art museum to see a special Dali exhibit as a reward. The deans thought I got serious punishment. My mom did not mess around with us misbehaving. And we rarely misbehaved. Glad to hear you've got an awesome mom. Good job for standing up to the bullies. I am a 5 feet 1 female 127 pounds. One night I entered a taxi after drinks with a few friends. There was a passenger in the front seat and the taxi driver. This is normal in Panama. Sharing cabs. The car stopped in an empty street almost one block from my house. The passenger turned around and pulled out a knife. I don't remember anything he said because I became Rambo. I punched him in the face and tried to get my door opened. At the same time the taxi driver was trying to pull me further into the car. I kicked him in the face and managed to get the door open when the passenger swings at me again. I was so pee off. I began wailing on him. Punching him until he bled. The taxi driver then tried to drive away with me still in the car and tuck rolled out of the moving car. I stood up. Put my shoes on. They fell off from my dive, grabbed my purse, they didn't get to rob me, and found help so I could get home. When I got home I showed my grandmother my wicked road rash and my wrist that was slit from my fist knife fight with the passenger. TL. DR. Tiny female ninja fought two guys in a car while one tried to stab her. I'm a skinny, non-threatening looking blonde girl. I'm usually easygoing and nice. But once. A drunk crazy guy came up to my little sister and me on public transportation and tried touching her hair. I smacked his hand away, grabbed him by his collar and threw him into another seat, hitting his head. Then I hissed at him, try that again and I'll knock all the teeth out of your head. At the time I thought I could actually do it. To cut a long story short I was with my sister in a scare maze. I freaked. Pushed her out of my way and legged it. Makes me feel bad because I always thought if it was a her or me situation I'd sacrifice myself. Guess not. My story is sort of the opposite of yours. I'm not against getting into a fight or jumping in to help someone out who needs it. At least. That's what I've always told myself. I've broken up a few fights and jumped in to protect people. So I thought I was a fairly tough kind of guy. I even have a beard. That's gotta count for something right anyway. For some reason I'd always had this daydream that if I saw a car accident I'd get out and rescue everyone involved. Then leave quietly before anyone could thank me. Anyway, I was about 20 yo. Driving home late one night. I live out in the woods. Only a few houses. Which are all set back off the road. I noticed headlights pointing out toward the road from a place I didn't remember a driveway again. In the woods. No street lights. So I stopped. Got out and started to approach the car. When I tell you I'd rehearse this type of event in my head about a thousand times. I'm not exaggerating. I got out my phone and called 911 and told them what was up. But as I got close enough to the car to see anything. I completely froze. I could see the driver slumped over in the front seat. Even though I could only see his forehead and his shoulders. I freaking knew he was dead. He wasn't moving at all and just the whole feel of the situation told me instantly that he was gone. Still, 
I logically knew that I should at least get over there to confirm this fact or maybe even help save his life. On the off chance he was alive. Couldn't do it. A minute later, two grizzled guys drove by. I flagged them down and watched as they had the balls to approach and confirm. But the cops came a bit later. Everyone confirmed that I wouldn't have been able to do anything. But dang did I feel like a bee. Still do. This was something I thought I was so ready for and I completely botched it. I've told myself since that it will never happen that way again. But obviously I've got no way of knowing if I'll just freeze again. Not looking for sympathy points. But I figured this was a story about a time I definitely didn't act like myself. In all actuality if he was still alive, moving him might have been worse than him staying still. Don't be too hard on yourself, buddy. A few Christmases ago a friend and I left a club and walked across the street to grab some food. There was a car parked outside the takeout, and I noticed some commotion coming from inside. It was Christmas Eve, so I initially presumed the passengers were just rowdy drunks waiting to be driven home. After watching the car for a few seconds, Something felt wrong and I suggested to my friend that we walk around the block before getting food, as I felt sick from the alcohol. My friends often mention my naivety and lack of perception, but something told me to stay away from the car. As we walked up the street, I turned around to see a man emerge from the driver's seat and punch a girl. I don't know if she was a passenger or a stranger, but he punched her straight to the ground. A bystander intervened, and the driver pulled out a knife and stabbed the bystander in the neck. So that was a crappy Christmas for a lot of people. I guess this is a case of intuition rather than reaction, but I still surprise myself. It's always good to keep weapons strategically hidden throughout your house for situations like this. Hidden is the key word, but in a place where you can access it easily. Keep a gun under a weak part of the drywall. Nothing freaks a burglar out like punching a wall with your first, and coming out with a gun. I live in a house on a fairly big street. One morning earlier this year I happened to be up very early, like 4.30am. I couldn't sleep, was just playing on my PS3 when I heard the front door handle rattle. Now, to be honest, I figured window house settling, something like that. Then I heard it distinctly again. I've never been broken into, and lived in worse areas, so I still thought perhaps my wife went out without me noticing. I have a German Shepherd and she went up a shit, so I knew someone was trying to get in my house. Now, I am also somewhat of a pacifist, and also a small guy, so I was surprised I just went to the door to look through the window. Maybe the dog gave me confidence. What I saw was a scrawny 18-20 year old kid, looking wasted off his butt. Man, I started cursing and threatening like I couldn't imagine. My wife later said she has never heard me that angry, couldn't fathom what was happening. Maybe the dog destroyed something expensive. I ran and grabbed a CO2 pallet gun pistol that I have had for years, looks real enough, and I ran to the door and pointed it at the guy through the window. He kept yelling I'm trying to leave, if you just open the door, I can leave get the frick away from here butthole then open the door so I can. When I pointed the gun at him, he made his fingers into the shape of a gun, pointed at me with a glazed over look and a goofy smile. Mother sucker. My wife called the police before I could get it in my head to kick his butt or let the dog have him. When they arrived, he was handcuffed and sitting on our lawn. I remember the cop shining his light at him and saying you pee yourself he did. He kept claiming he knew someone who lived in our house and we were lying. Cop just said that dog sure doesn't think so. Anyway. I was fully prepped to frick him up. Never thought it would cross my mind. I think back and wonder, had I forgotten to lock the door, how much damage my dog could have done to him. TL. DR. Little drunk guy tried to get in my house, even a coalition of a German shepherd, my cursing and shouting, and a fake gun couldn't back him off. Fight, especially in your home. It is an extension of you and an attack on it should be interpreted as an attack on your person. You don't have time to decide if he's a nice burglar just after possessions or someone going to do horrible things as an added bonus to the burglary. But you shouldn't feel ashamed. Be proud. Castle laws. If they break into your house then you have full rights to beat the living crap out of them or possibly kill them depending on where you live. 
I'm not sure if there was a more logical safe less retarded course of action in either of these but I'm somewhat of a passive wallflower usually and my reaction in both these situations really surprised me. I had lived in NYC for many years and it was not unusual for me to be out walking or returning from work, waitressing at very late hours. At 4am one early morning a car slowed down and started following me. This had happened before and I could usually quite easily lose them by turning down one way streets. But this sucker was persistent and managed to find me again. Usually, at this point I would jump into a taxi or find an open store or restaurant to hide in. But none were around. He revved up and pulled right in front of me, jumped out, grabbed me and tried to shove me into the passenger side of his car. I punched him in the face, I kicked, I screamed, then he pinned me against a fence with all his weight and punched me in the head. Hard, I saw stars and then a calmness came over me. I knew that getting into that car was not an option. Better off dying here. We fought some more and I somehow managed to unpin an arm long enough to stick my thumb in his eye. I felt it squish and pushed harder. He eased his grip for an instant and I pulled away and ran. He stumbled towards his car. When I saw that he was hurt and not coming after me, I jumped in front of his car, got a good look at him and screamed I'm going to get you, sucker read off his license plate number to him, and then ran to the nearest open bar and called the police. The second event was many years later. I was walking to work, 9 to 5 job by then, and as I was crossing the street a car took the turn a little too fast and knocked someone down. Even though by then I was already a typical hardened never get involved New Yorker, I ran over to him, told him not to move, tore off my coat to cover him, held his head so that he did not move his neck, yelling at passersby to call an ambulance and get the traffic to go around us. It took a while but I stayed with him until the ambulance came, then casually dusted off my coat and finished my walk to work. TLDR. Tiny. Shy and timid girl fought off an abductor and came to the aid of a hit and run victim. I was parked on the side of the road in a neighborhood on a Friday night. I had my window down, and a car of a couple people slowly up next to me, and one of them in the back seat politely says excuse me. I turn to them and the person in the passenger seat tosses an empty toilet paper roll. It barely skims my car and gently falls to the ground. As they drive off, I put my enraged beat redhead out the window and shout, I'll frick you up. I felt emotionally toyed with and confused. Should not have laughed this hard. The smart thing to do would have been to call the police and hide upstairs. They would have caught and arrested him. Instead, at 3am, I walk through the wide open door from my living room to the light filled garage while dressed in a tank top and underwear and yelled, what the frick are you doing in my garage at the guy going through the boxes in there? He just stared at me stupidly, so I yelled inside to my sleeping husband to call the police, and the then repeated myself even more loudly to the stranger. He bolted, leapt over the storage boxes, lifted the garage door, and ran out into the night. The police picked up someone matching his descriptions a few blocks away but the scenario took place with me without my glasses on. So although he matched my vague description, slight build, blonde, dark clothes, I couldn't positively at him. Afterwards, I realized how incredibly stupid I was. I have a 6 year old son to protect. Confronting petty criminals in my garage is stupid. TL. DR. At least I had time to put clothes on before I left in the police car. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.